but so that your soul knows that you're a high quality man. You attract what you are. She will reflect you, right? You want a high quality woman? Be a high quality man. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I'm new to this program and I'm very grateful to be here. I have a few questions about relationships for you. What I truly want is a high quality relationship with a high quality woman. That being said, I've had difficulties opening myself up to these kinds of connections. Past heartbreak has in a way closed me off to allowing for getting too serious with any one girl. It's like some kind of defense mechanism of my subconscious wanting to avoid getting hurt. Not to mention the fact that 50% of marriages now fail, which further feeds this hesitancy. And losing half of my shit and being stuck at square one after a failed marriage is a path I'd absolutely like to avoid. What advice or suggestions do you have for me? So there's two parts to this that I want to approach. First is you. We got to deal with you because you're the magnet of your life. The world that you live in is a mirror reflection of your consciousness. It has everything to do with the man in the mirror, right? So we're going to talk about the man in the mirror in a moment here. But we also are going to talk a little bit about having high standards for women. We have let our standards for women sink into the freaking gutter. Because anything with a hole in a heartbeat, we'll poke and then fall in love with. We have to stop allowing women to have power over us through the pussy. And that's really what's happened. Women have absolutely zero power over men except for that seductive power of what they sitting on, right? And we can't let them be that way no more because it's led us down this road where most men are simps. Remember what I said about promiscuity last week, right? Promiscuity leads to symptom, right? You're going to be a simp. And you're going to simp about. And here's the thing. Most men are simp before they get it. And when they get it, the symptom is nailed in. That's it. You ain't going to change. Right? So let's, let's, let's go back to number one. And we're going to talk about number two. We're going to talk about you. And then we're going to talk about the high quality women and vetting them, having high standards for them. Women will rise to the standard that you set for them and accept for them. Just like children, just like dogs, just like employees, just like anyone, anyone in your life will rise to the standard that you set for them or they will disappear. They don't belong. We say we want a high quality woman. A high, here's the thing about women. Here's, about, here's the thing about women collectively in our culture and why it's our fault that things suck right now. A woman will reflect, women will reflect the consciousness of the man. If the man has a weak consciousness, she will reflect in becoming over aggressive, becoming promiscuous, wanting to control because you are weak. A woman who's with a strong man, a man who sets the frame, a man who has boundaries, who tells it like it is and doesn't put up with crap, she's going to fall into her place. This is why in various poetic language, women are represented by the moon. The moon doesn't have its own light. Did you know that? You look up out at night and you could see the moon, it's bright. But the reason why the moon shines is because of the sun. You are the sun. We are sons, sons of God. We reflect the light of God on this planet, not women. We project that light and women reflect it. We project the light of God on the planet, right? And so it is up to us to be the type of man that, get, that will allow women to give us back what we want. We put forth righteousness. We put forth authority. We put forth all the things that, uh, that, is, that is truly expected of a man of God, and women will reflect it, right? Either that or they'll self-destruct, and a lot of them will. In this day and age, this culture, a lot of them will. Most of them will. They'll die for baby mamas, right? 
That's just the way it's going to be. And, and a woman's value is found in her relationships. A woman has made it when she's got babies. A woman who dies barren, right? There used to be shame to that. Did you know that? There used to be shame to women who didn't die, who didn't have babies before they die. They call that woman a barren woman, right? Empty. It's an empty woman. Bared no fruit. What a, what a waste of a life, right? Because inherently, that is where they get their true, their great value. A man gets his value from the work that he does. He's known by what he can provide. He's known by his status, right? They've got it kind of flip-flop where women kind of chase status and achievement, right? But yet what they do best, what their superpower is, what we want them for more than anything, making babies, they don't know anything about it. They'd rather just kill their babies and keep riding the cock carousel. But once again, they're this way because men have allowed it. Now, what kind of man will attract a quote unquote high quality woman? Because we have to dive into that in a moment anyway, right? What does high quality woman mean, right? We have to talk about that. We have to talk about that. Because for what most people think a high quality woman is, it's not, it's not. What kind of man do you need to be to attract the kind of woman that will make, that will be a asset to your life? First of all, first of all, and most, most, foundational is you must maintain your own frame don't go let me throw this out there this is my opinion don't go having sex with women trying to date trying to trying to establish a relationship if you don't have your own place don't do it not because you should be ashamed that you still live with your mom or your dad or someone else, then there's no shame in it. It's just not worthy. It's just not, it's just not, it's not worth it because you're, you, don't, you don't own your frame. You don't own yourself. You don't own your place, right? And if you don't own your place, you can't bring a woman into it. A woman needs a place to come into. Never, ever, 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 ever move into a woman's place. Worst mistake you could ever make. My father always used to say that. Don't ever move in with another woman. Your best bet is you're looking for a woman to move in with you. But if that's going to be the case, you must have your own place. Paramount. You must be the master of your domain. You must have, like my mother would say, your own do key. You have to have your own do key, right? What is do key? Door key. Your door key to your place, right? And I know that sounds sort of superficial. I know that sounds like, oh, Ellie, I thought you were going to give me something uh, far more philosophical, right? Very pragmatic, very practical. Own your home, right? Own your own doki, right? So you have to have your own place. You have to be making money, right? You got to be making money. You got to be making resources, and I'm talking about attracting a high quality woman. I'm not talking about just some chick you might bone that'll go along with you for the ride. Sometimes that works, sometimes that don't. But if you want to set yourself right, you focus on yourself. You get your frame, you make your money, you build yourself up to be the best you first. You got to be in shape. Don't be fat. Don't be fat. Don't be out of shape. Don't be sloppy. Clean up. Get a cut. Wear nice clothes, not for the hoes, but so that your soul knows that you're a high quality man. You attract what you are. She will reflect you, right? You want a high quality woman? Be a high quality man. To be a high quality man must mean also that a woman is a cherry on top of the cake of your life. Your layers are already laid. The icing is already iced. You're just waiting for a nice cherry on top. You want to attract a high quality woman, you be a high quality man that's just looking for a little enhancement, just a little something to make my life that much better. And if you're like me, and if you're like a lot of the men in this program, a woman that's going to be a good mother. Because I don't want to bring no woman into my life just for the boning. I don't understand it. I don't understand these people who get married or get together and they spend all this time together and don't make no babies. 
Make babies. You should be vetting women for their ability to make babies. She should be healthy, right? She shouldn't be drinking more alcohol than you. She should have no addictions, right? She should want children, lots of them, right? So now we're talking a little bit about the woman. We talk a little bit about the woman. What does high quality woman mean for you? You gotta be a high quality man. And I just laid out, for men it's very simple. High quality is about frame. It's about uh, money, right? It's about status. It's about sovereignty, right? Even if you sweep the street, you're a street sweeper. It don't matter. A street sweeper who saves his money, has his place, dress nice clothes, is a higher quality man than a dude that's working on Wall Street, but he's deeply in debt, he's sniffing coke all day, he wakes up drunk in his car, that's, a, that's not it, that ain't it. It's the way you carry yourself. It's the dignity that you carry yourself with. And if no, and if no woman is interested in you right now, while you stand in that place of dignity, then, then don't deal with women. Just don't deal with them. You don't need them. That's, that's a fact. We don't need them. It's nice to have them. Nice to make families. Nice to make babies. Nice to companion. But you don't need them. You need to, see, you need to be a strong man your fir yourself first. Now, when you say attract a high quality woman, you got to ask yourself, what does that mean? So, for example, yes, last week, Colleen and I, we went out on a date. We go to date night, me and my wife. I take her out to dinner on Fridays. That's what it is, really. All right? I get my wife out the kitchen and I take her on a date. I take her to go buy some food. And so uh, we were at some restaurant, pretty decent restaurant, and this dude rolls up in like, you know, real expensive sports car, Ferrari or some shit like that. Rolls up, right? <laughs> Parks his car, and he gets out. Dude is clearly like in his 60s, right? He's like in his 60s. He looks like he takes good care of himself, but you know he has some Botox done a little bit, and you know maybe he colored his hair and shit. So he's on the, he's on the upper end of age, right? But he's got a lot of money, and he's taking good care of himself. He get out the car, he come around the side, open up the door, and guess what comes step out? This Fine, long leg, blonde hair, 20-something-year-old girl. Is that a high-quality woman? For that man? Yes. Because apparently all he wants is a Barbie doll for his arm. The dude has everything that he wants in life. He don't want no troubles. He don't want no hassles. He don't want no single baby mamas. He don't want no single mamas, right? He don't want any baggage. He don't want any crazy women. Definitely don't want no damn 50, 40, 50, 60 year old woman who been run true. He want a sweet young thing that he can, he can allow her to step into his frame. She, on the other hand, gets everything she wants. Everything she wants because this dude got money taking me places, buying me things, right? High quality for him is a young thing thing, young thing thing, right? So maybe he already had his wife and his children. Who knows? I don't know what the case may be, but the point is that that's the definition of high quality for that man. And he can do that and he'll be, he'll be all right, right? Whether or not she sticks around probably doesn't matter because the dude got so much money, he could replace her. High quality for him don't require much, but a pretty face and long legs. If you like that and you got that, and you got it that way, I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I think that's great, right? You're a young man, build yourself up, make your money, set your frame. Make it so that your woman don't need to be nothing but a pretty face. Hey baby, you just, you just look pretty, that's all. You just be quiet and look pretty, that's all. I just need you here to just be nice to me. Be nice and look nice. You don't need to do too much, right? Right, at his age, maybe he's hitting it, maybe he's not, I don't know. Right? He just want her to look good next to him. Be a companion for him to walk with. That's high quality. A guy like me, especially when I was young, and I'm looking to grind, I'm looking to build, I'm looking to give, I'm looking to work hard. I like to put the weight on my shoulders and carry it. I want a family. That's what I want. 
And so when vetting a woman, if you want a family, you got to do you got to come out straight with the guns and you got to say, hey, what are your thoughts on making babies? Right. You have to have I think that men should have not just have standards, but we should have questions just we should have standard questions that we ask women that vet them whether you know they give you a yes answer or no and there's no in between don't have sex with women that do not fulfill your your objectives that do not meet your standards don't do it don't do it do not try to save these broke women do not have sex with these women because you're gonna fall in love with the wrong woman right the sex is not that good trust me Trust me, it's not worth it to ruin your life. We see men here who are struggling with that. Do, is she, here's another one. I brought this up the other day. Is she clean or dirty? Look in her car. Look in the cracks in her car. If there's crumbs and there's, there's McDonald's wrappers and shit. Bird doo-doo all over it, Right? Look at how she keeps her space. Not how she keeps herself. Because some of the nastiest women put on the most makeup. They make themselves out to be so beautiful. But when you get in that house, it's a disaster. Here's an important one if you're vetting a woman and you go to her house. Ask her to use her bathroom and look in the cabinet. How many, how many mental problem pills are they on? Don't date no woman that got mental problems, that taking pills for their problems. Don't save them, right? That should be a big one. That's a huge one. You got to ask them their medical history. Don't get a with a woman that you don't ask them their medical history. You should have them fill out a health history questionnaire. Everything from what their parents fed them when they were kids to what kind of medications they take today. Fill out this form in triplicate. <laughs> Fill this form out and get back to me, right? This is, this is velvet rope marketing, right? As a marketer, right? And as a man in, in, you know, in the sexual marketplace, why they call it the marketplace? Because you freaking marketing, right? In the marketplace, one of the best ways to get compliance and to, uh, and to splice, like to cut out the people that won't do well with you is through questionnaires. Questionnaires. Right? I'm being facetious. I'm joking around. You don't necessarily need to give her a questionnaire. But have certain questions that you're going to ask. Do some snooping. Guaranteed women are snooping on you. Guaranteed they're Googling your name. They, they, they're stalking your ex-girl. They're snooping. They're looking around. Us, we so dumb that as long as we can hit that and come, she's good, man. I think she all right. She, is, she got a sweet... Sweet watery guts, <laughs> right? That's, what, that's the way men think. Men are so dumb. Men are, we're so stupid we don't treat our women like we would a business partner. Why? Why are we so stupid? Pussy, right? Makes us dumb. That's why I say don't put your dick in a woman that you wouldn't make babies with, that you're not actively about to make babies with, right? So these are some of the ways that you want to set yourself up. You, gotta be a, you have to be a high-quality man. Don't expect anything from women if we're not high-quality because they're a mirror reflection of us. The reason why women are running around acting the way they act in our society right now is because men are weak. As long as men are weak, women are going to take advantage of us. They ain't going to do the right thing. Next, treat the relationship like a job application. This is what high standard means to me. This is what I expect. Does she fulfill? Women do that shit with men all the time. He got to be six foot something, six figure something. Meanwhile, she's short, fat with five kids. And she thinks she deserves it. Why is it that women believe they deserve so much and men will, men will settle for so little? Stop settling for little. Here's another very important one that, look, I'm just giving my opinion. I'm not in your place, but if I was to go back or if I was in your place now and I was to be the arrogant man that I can be, that I am as a middle-aged dude, I wouldn't settle for anything less than a virgin. 
I don't want women that have been run through. If I'm a young man and I'm looking for a woman to baby up with, marry and settle down, she can't have a high body count. That's a standard that men should begin to acknowledge again. There was a time that if a woman was found out to have had sex before she was with her husband, that she would be ostracized. Shame. There's shame associated with that. You, you would have sex with her, and if her, her cherry was already bust, right? It already popped her cherry, the blood already came, which is the indication, you call it a hymen, is the indication as to whether or not this woman has been penetrated, there will be shame. We should bring, this is how women control us as well. They control us with sex and shame. We should bring back shame for women. They should be ashamed. You're, you, you are out there spreading your legs, humping and jumping and breathing heavy with 40 men. I don't care how smart you are, how beautiful you are, how much you pretend like you want to do my laundry and fold that shit. You've been run through. You're used up. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that and they think that I'm wrong, but I'm not. When a woman has had sex with lots and lots of men, she loses her ability to pair bond because she takes on the trauma of that broken relationship and she ends up with, they, with what they call alpha widowhood. She's an alpha widow. That means men alphaed up on her, dropped their nut on her, and left. And that hurt her heart. That pains her deeply. And now she carries that into her other relationships. Because women, like I said earlier, are a reflection of a man, each one of those men maintain a reflection within her. So you're dealing with a woman, but you're not dealing with just her. You're dealing with all of the men that had been with her. She's a reflection of each one of those. If you got this woman, you don't understand why out of nowhere she start flipping out and arguing with you. You got to remember that she's, she is she is manifesting the spirit of some man. Women get hypnotized in that way, right? That's why they have that crazy look in their eyes when they've been with too many men, right? There's something a little fishy. There's something a little off. And look, it's not just me saying this. I'm just being based enough to spit it out there. I know most of y'all think this stuff. Some of you male feminists out there, you'll allow yourself to be cucks. That's cool. I have no opinion against this. I'm talking about men that are willing to be honest about what they really want. Women know this is true too. You know how you know that the women know this is true? Because they'll never tell you their real body count. A man will inflate his body count, right? Because we're different and there's no shame. Not that I'm saying it's a good idea to be a slut maker, but there's less shame because there's less risk, right? But now women take the birth control pill, so there's no risk, but the shame is still there. That's why whatever she tell you, I slept with 10 dudes, is 20. Double it, right? I think we need to start demanding that again. I will not deal with women who are sluts. I will not deal with women that are not virgins. We should expect them to be virgins. Why not? Why not, right? Think about it this way, right? Like these analogies, look, these analogies are just real. I'm just coming, I'm just being honest with these analogies. People are going to come out. I know that they're going to have a hard time with what I'm saying, but think about a car. Well, you, as soon as you drive that shit off the lot, it loses its value. You buy a brand new car, you buy, somebody else buys that car, you drive it off the lot. As soon as you drive off the lot, that car loses its value. As soon as somebody takes a ride in that car, it loses its value. That car, say, ends up being sold to another dude. It loses its value. It's sold to a third guy. It loses its value. By the time it comes to you, it's lost its value four times. And now, let's replace the car with a woman. You want to marry her. So you're going to pay full price. You're going to pay full price for this car that has been run, run around town with by four other guys, five other guys, 10 other guys, 20 other guys. They didn't pay nothing for it. These dudes didn't pay nothing for that. You're gonna pay full price for it, right? That would anger me. That would upset me. I don't like the idea of that. Higher standards for women. Does that mean date younger? Yes, right? I mean, girls past 25, man, I would, I'm so grateful I got married. My wife was 22, I was 23. 
who knows what could have happened otherwise, right? I'm not, I was never smart. I'm not smart. I'm giving you these ideas based on retrospect. I know this stuff because hindsight is 2020. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't have yo Elliot telling me on YouTube, don't mess with these hoes. Grace of God, grace of God, grace of God in my life. But knowing what I know now and trying to spit some wisdom to my young kings here, I tell you, don't deal with women that's not under 25. Do not. Why? Why? Why allow yourself to fall in love with an old barren bitch? Right? What does she have to offer that a young girl, a much more submissive girl, right? A girl with less mileage could do for you. It depends on what you want, though. Right? So being young, being pure, chaste, being clean, cleanly, clean home, clean room, clean house, clean car. Don't ever date a nasty, lazy woman. A lazy woman is a nasty woman. This is what my mother would always say. She said, don't date no lazy woman. A lazy woman is a nasty woman. And you know she's going to be lazy. Oh, boy, it only going to get worse because when you have the babies, you're going to come in from work all day, and she would have been home watching soap operas with the baby, and she want to throw the baby in your arms and go for the girl's night out. Lazy. Don't date a girl that has more partying than you, right? If she likes to drink more than you, she likes to go out more than you, don't date her. Don't date women who have male friends. Just my opinion. I don't want any woman that be talking on the phone, DMing back and forth, having conversations and flirting with her friends. There's no such thing as male and female friends. They're not just friends. Think about you and your girlfriends. Nine out of the 10 girls that you just friends with, if she say, hey, spread them open, right? She spread them open, she say, hey, come here, boy. You would go. You would go in an instant, right? These women who think they have friends, if your girl thinks she have male friends, run this little trick. Say, hey, good, okay, call up your male friend or send him a text message and tell him, hey, come over tonight, I wanna hit. I want you to hit this. I want you to lick this. I want you to take me to seventh heaven tonight. You think he gonna be like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I, you know, I thought we were just friends. I'm not, I'm not interested in that. No, it ain't gonna happen. Men and women are not friends, so I wouldn't date any women who have male friends. And it's tough, right? Because now it's, on, it's not even like back in the day when I was a kid, we would be hanging out on the block, and you would know a girl has a lot of guy friends because it was simple. It was either she was hanging out with a lot of guys and you would see her, or it, we had beepers back then, right? And you would look at the beeper and be like, who's beeping you? Who's, who's beeping you? It was one channel of communication, your freaking beeper. So here's another one that I would suggest you do in terms of vetting these women. Do not date a woman that won't let you check her phone. Let her check your phone and you check her phone, right? If you have nothing to hide, right? But well, really we're talking about her, right? I'm, I'm, I'm out for my boys right now. Check her phone. If she won't let you check her phone in, in, a, in, in a, a spontaneous interaction, hey, you mind if I take a look at your phone? She got something to hide. If you're ever curious about what's going on in your girl's life and you want to know the truth about something, it's all in her phone. Every answer you want to know, everything you want to know, everything that she's thinking, everything that she's doing is in that phone. If she's willing to get, pass that phone over to you, then she might be worth making a wife. But you got to decide when is the time for that because we live in hookup culture, right? So, of course, I'm giving you my opinions, but practically, practically, it, it just might not work. It just might not work. I don't know. So, you go on to say that your, you know, past heartbreak has in a way closed you off from allowing to get yourself to get too serious with any one girl, and it's some kind of defense mechanism of my subconscious wanting to avoid getting hurt. So that's okay. That's okay to be closed off. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with allowing yourself to be closed off. As long as you're consciously closed off and you're consciously closing yourself off. Because you know what happens behind closed off doors, closed doors? Growth. Every garden is walled. If you want something to grow, you protect it. If you want your love to grow, you want your heart to grow, you want yourself to grow as a man that, that's available for relationships, put up those walls. Put up boundaries. Don't let them in so easy. That's a part of the problem with men. We let women in so easy, right? Men and women, we just let people in so easy. Don't let them in so easy. Have high standards and vet these women. So that's it, man. That's my opinion on that. I think you'll be all right, but the main thing for men these days, especially these young dudes that, you're, that are here with me, is you got to build yourself up. you got to build your frame, and you got to allow a woman to step into your frame. Don't step into a woman's frame. And you know how you step into a woman's frame? When she... When she Starts throwing that pee around, right? And you just like a <laughs> hound dog sniffing that stuff up and can't wait, can't give it up, right? You gotta be stronger than that. You gotta be stronger than that. You gotta be strong, men. And I'll give you this one last piece. One last piece. One last important piece. This is like the cherry on the top of this conversation. Start retaining your semen. Stop jerking off. Stop jerking off. Stop busting nuts. Because the more you retain your semen, the more you control your sexual energy. And the more you are sovereign over your sexual energy, the more power you have of, of everything on your environment. Everything in your environment. If you can control your... And let me tell you something, because I, I'm practicing now. I'm a practitioner of semen retention. Am I... Do I Am, am I a master at it? No. No. But I'm a practitioner at it because me, I'm practicing. I'm trying. I'm seeing what happens, right? And you know I have a wife, so for me, it's Carezza sex, right? Am I going to blow my load today or am I going to retain, right? And it's a dance. But I'll tell you this. There's something that I learned about myself. Good old 42-year-old Uncle E is learning something about sexual transmutation by retaining my seed. And that is that... As that, as you know, a few days go by without busting a nut, you start to have that, you, 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 the energy rises in your body and, and you know, and you start, you start feeling it down below. You have to, this is just, just some tips. When you start feeling that sexual urge rising in your body, you don't suppress it. You don't get angry at it. You don't judge it. You don't try to push it down. What you do is you notice it, right? I'm looking down because I'm talking about our dicks. You notice it and you I don't know about you, and maybe I'm being, man, I'm giving too much right now, but I'm in a ranting mood, so I'm going to say it. But you know when you, when you get a boner, right, and you feeling it, and it feels good to have that boner, and you start pulsing it, ooh, ooh, right? <laughs> right? Just sitting there, and you're just like, oh, ooh, right? All you need, all you want is somebody to come and grab it. Come over here, girl, come grab my dick, right? When you start feeling that, like that, it's almost like your, your prostate is preparing for ejaculation, right? Like there's just like the pulsation. There's a pulsation down at the root. What you gotta do is notice that pulsation and give it a number. Say this like, a, boy, I'm at like a nine right now. Woo, I'm hot, right? Breathe. And withdraw, withdraw from your dick energy. Withdraw your dick energy back into your body, right? Allow it. It's funny because you'll notice, you'll know that it's energy because sometimes you'll still be as stiff. You'll still just be as rock solid as before. But your consciousness, I don't know what it is, starts to recede from it. And then you start to feel it into your belly. And I don't know about you guys, but I start to feel it in my heart. When I get horny, I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my, in my glands here, right? I start even salivating. So what I do now is when I feel that urge, rather than like, I gotta go release it, I breathe through it and I draw that 10, say it's a 10, boy, you just touch me and I'm, if say you have a 10, right, or a nine or an eight, breathe, draw it down to like a five, a six, a five, a four, just a little bit. Just, just pull back a little bit. Just pull back a little bit. It, and it's not even like you have to do something physically. It's, it's here. Draw that energy back up. And then you have to, you, you literally have to be consciously breathing. Mm. 
I find that when I do that and then I'm breathing that way and I go and I have to go do work for the day, I have so much more power. I'm so much more focused. I have so much more strength. Sexual transmutation is a real thing. And if you're out there looking for women and you're retaining your seed and you're transmuting your sexual energy, just like I told you here, I've, I've cracked the code for sexual transmutation. At least I think I did because I'm practicing. You start doing the things that I'm telling you right now, you're going to be irresistible. You'll be irresistible to these women and you will be in such mastery of your domain that you will just look at them and you get to pick, choose, and refuse. You could already pick, choose, and refuse, but you will have more of a sense of mastery over yourself that you'll just see these women as, I don't need you. I don't need you. Who's the lucky girl that I get that gets to bask in my attention for the day? Right? That's the kind of attitude you want to have, man. So that's it. That was a long one. There was a whole lot there. It was packed. Unpack that. Take notes. Rewatch it. And let me know how it goes. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.